Okay, so let's take a look at our second uh, HydroFlow extension option. We're going to look at the HydroGraphs extension, kind of your heck HMS um, type thing. So let's launch HydroGraphs. Base, same basic uh, user interface. Um, one of the things we haven't really talked about much is kind of setting up the IDFs, but um, pretty simple. If you come into your IDF curves and uh, or hit the button here, IDF, um, you do have the option of just keying in different things, your IDF table, um, and creating that graph. So uh, pretty quick and simple. Uh, you can also save these so you don't have to do that every single time. Um, you can import them in. So I'm uh, just going to get out of that. So I'm going to just do a simple one with uh, two watersheds coming into a pond. And so that way we can get the how to set up your watershed and then how to size your pond accordingly. So um, let's pick the SES hydrograph. There's also rational, but we're going to pick SES. Um, kind of walks you through the wizard. Let's describe it. We're going to just say basin A, uh, drainage area. Just going to pick a number, curve number. Um, now we use the SES method, so we'll be choosing the curve number. If uh, you don't know the curve number, you can choose this button here. It says look up curve numbers. Um, pick that, and it gives you a quick... Uh, idea of what your curve number could be, but if you're familiar with curve numbers, uh, these things are huge. They're uh, a lot more detailed than this and what type of curve number, and, and to get to that number is um, soil factors, different things involved in there. So this gives you an idea of what your curve number could be, um, but don't take this for, for what it is. It's just kind of a quick reference guide to some common curve numbers. So um, the percentage button here to the left is a composite curve number, so if we were to choose that, we could actually take that 55 acre area and do a composite curve number um, from this. So let's we'll go ahead and do that. We're just going to key it in. We're going to go uh, 20 acres has a curve number of 76. Uh, 20 acres has a curve number of 68, and maybe that remaining five acres for some reason is developed, and we're going to go a little higher. We're going to go 88. So you can see here how it gave us that composite curve number. Uh, based on all that information. So we're going to hit OK. Time of concentration. Um, again, different options, lag, curve pitch, user, TR55. If you do use the TR55, uh, you'll pick that, choose the TR55 button, um, and it gives you a bunch of different options here to run through your flow length and, and land slopes and, and all that information to get uh, That's for your sheet flow. And then you have your concentrated flow. So you can use the TR55 method if you want. Hit compute, and it'll all do it for you. We're just going to use the user um, time of concentration method, and I'm just going to key one in. So 31 is fairly flat. Um, hydrologic data, uh, time interval, we're just going to choose something, five feet. Uh, storm distribution, make sure you've got the right storm chosen here. We're going to stick with type two. Um, and then here to the right, you have an event manager. So if you pick event manager, uh, you have the option to choose what event you want and the intensity in inches uh, for that different uh, return period uh, um, method. So we're going to just leave it 210 and 100 works for me. Apply and hit exit. So if we have all that information set up, you can come in and just hit OK. And it's going to give us a hydrograph. It's going to give us our Q value. Um, we can hit results. And that's going to, again, bring this up for Basin A based on our 2-year, based on our 10-year, and based on our 100-year. And all the information here, you can export it out, um, do different things, include this in. If you print this, you can include it in your reports as well. So um, some quick and easy reporting tools. So I'm going to hit Exit. So it's giving me my Basin A. I'm going to choose SCS once again. Going to call that basin B. A little smaller, 32 acres. Curve number, I'm just going to key one in. We're going to go uh, 68. User, time of concentration, maybe a little steeper. We'll go 24. I'm just going to go with the same stuff here. Hit OK and have that calculated. Results, same thing. Going to hit exit. So we've got our two. Um, we have a bunch of different tools here, so we can combine these hydrographs.
we can add reaches. So if they're going to other hydrographs and you have multiple basins and multiple sub-basins, you can add a reach. Um, or if these go into a stream or a ditch or something, you can, you can model that ditch as well. You have a pond and you have uh, routing through a pond. So we're just going to take a quick look. Uh, let's see. We'll add these together. So if we add A and B, I'm going to hold Control and pick the two. Hit OK. Exit. So it's added those together to form um, a combined hydrograph. So if we click on that, uh, you can see here, and you can add it a description. Uh, so we put that in there. Now I want to choose a pond. So I'm going to go pond. And this is where you can size your pond. Um, you can either do it by several methods, and we're going to go left to right here, but I'm going to talk about these methods. Um, you can do it by a contour method where you have known contours, and maybe it's not an exact trapezoidal pond. Um, you can come in here and you can key in your contours. Uh, manual, kind of the same thing, you can key in your uh, manually entered storage values. You can do a trapezoidal pond, so if you, have a, if you just want an idea of a pond size, and a trapezoidal pond is pretty typical. Um, you can come in here. Uh, you can also have chambers. So if you have some underground chambers, you can put in all that chamber information. So I'm going to go back to trapezoidal. Um, put in my bottom elevation. So maybe the bottom of pond said 100. It's going to go 80 by 40. Side slopes of 4 to 1. A depth. Uh, maybe I want a four-foot pond with a foot of freeboard. So I'm going to put in five there and hit apply. So it's going to give me over here on the right um, my incremental volumes based on those half foot intervals. Um, so you can see here across the top I've got my uh, contour elevation or my interval elevation contour area so square footage of that contour storage between the two and then my incremental storage. So you can come in here quickly and look at that pond and see if you can either upsize it or downsize it. Um, you can change these values here. So maybe I want 60 by 30. I can hit apply and recap those volumes. So I can quickly get in there and do quite a bit um, and pretty useful. So I'm going to have calculated that. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to hit exit. And where did my pond go? Oh, there it is, sorry. Um, so I can have a pond, trapezoidal, and it's going to give me that information there. Um, I have my my uh, reports here that I can quickly cycle through, two-year, ten-year, uh, get that information. I can go through, and if I have multiple ponds, um, I can look at these different ponds here. And I just got rid of that, but I'm going to double-click and um, come in here, and you can size your ponds. So if I've sized that how I want, I can come in here, I can add orifice, orifices to it, I can add weirs to it, exfiltration, um, different pond tools here to where I can see um, see my storage estimates based on different schemes, different, different ideas, different things here, whether or not I want to use that culvert, whether it's active or not. Um, a lot of different tools. Um, you can run your graphs, you can do your tables, you can really do some really good quick reports. Um, and have them printable and have them there and have something visual as well. So 